All right, here we have a uh, Dobinson's IMS 59-50700. There's a front internal reservoir monotube shocks IMS for a uh, fifth gen 4Runner, Lexus GX470, um, and a uh, late, late generation Toyota FJ Cruiser. So this is how they come as soon as you get them from the box. You can have a look at what's inside here. We're going to have some basic information, how to set the coil seat height. I'm going to need a tape measure for that to show you how that works. Um, so I'm doing it here on the IMS because it's a little bit handier to show you than the MRA. The MRA is monotube remote adjustable and those have a big hose and reservoir to handle. So this is going to be a little bit easier to show you. I'm going to show you we've got a coil seat and adjuster, top mounts and bushings and the same for the other side. So let me pull out this shock here. Here we have the, um, um, the same stuff they put on wine bottles actually to keep them uh, from hitting into other wine bottles. But these are thread protectors. This is a fully threaded body. You can see some right here. Now um, I'm gonna take this, take the pressure off this. This is a monotube shock. Monotube shocks do run pretty high pressure, about 150 PSI generally. I got to compress this down to get uh, the uh, the strap off there, the metal strap. Now, see, it's high pressure, but it doesn't like fling right up real quick or anything like that. From here up, you wouldn't know that this was a uh, monotube shock because it has the same features as the um, twin tube, but it does have a little bit thicker shaft and a much bigger piston. This top part here, this top. Um, Shaft protector is, is common among, among the, uh, the range of Dobinson's parts. So we're going to slide this off here. Now here in the USA, um, Dobinson's requested the adjuster rings to be black, not the standard, um, what do you call it, purple color that Dobinson's has, have one over there on that reservoir cap. So how does this work? These are, there's two on here takes a little bit. There's two on here for security reasons. I only need one that gives enough thread engagement to hold the pressure of the coil spring. But there's two because this bottom one is going to hold the top one into position. So we've already got a stripped down body. Let me take out a coil seat. This is a cast coil seat. The coil seat you should, you should be able to tell which way is up, but um, I'm going to tell you just to try and make this clear. The bottom side is the flatter side. This, this is the part that literally is going to sit against the adjuster rings on the body. And the top part has the notch that the end of the coil spring will sit on. This literally sits very simply over the threaded body. So how do you set the coil seat height? I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of how to do that, sorry for the, the noise. But we will leave the bottom one loose and the top one approximately where we want it. We're gonna take our tape measure. Before I do that, I'll show you on here that the standard vehicles are all listed on here. Toyota Land Cruiser Prada 150 and FJ Cruiser, standard coil seat height is 213 millimeters. On the X axis, X axis, that's hard to say. Center of the lower mount to the bottom lip of the coil seat. Bottom lip of the coil seat, center of the bottom mount. Where is the center of the bottom mount? Well, geez, that thing's only like one centimeter thick, so it's not hard to ballpark within a millimeter of where the center is. What you're gonna do, and you're gonna do this on the flat, is you're gonna take your tape measure and put it into that notch, and you're gonna measure down to the center of the lower coil seat. So we're at approximately 235 millimeters right now. That wasn't bad considering I was just ballparking it. So we'll bring the top one down to 220, close. Probably about there. We're at 200 and 12 to 213 millimeters. So, pretty sure you get the idea, but 
The top one is now set. Let's say that's exactly 213 millimeters. It would be easier if I put it down, obviously. We're gonna leave that there. We're gonna take the lower mount and bring it up to lock in the top mount. This is a locking ring to lock in the top adjuster. So let me grab the tools out and I'm gonna show you how to set that in place. All the Dobinson's monotube shocks come with the adjuster tool. You don't have to buy it separately. It's a pretty simple tool. It has a, a, um, a key or whatever you want to call it right there to match the threads in the tool. Not sure if you're going to be able to see at this angle, but because of the way these spin, the bottom one has to go to the right, the top one has to go to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold the top one still and we're going to put the other tool on the bottom one. You've got to keep these separated. And all we're gonna do is on the bottom one, we're gonna apply a bit of pressure. That's it, you're not gonna be able to see what I just did pretty much, but this one is holding against the top. This one, I just rotate it until it's locked in. Now the, the coil spring is set, I mean the coil seat height is set at the proper height. And depending on the orientation of how you're setting up this for the left side strut or the right side strut, you may need the coil seat to be facing one direction or the other and allocating the top mounts as well. Now, let's pretend that you've had this on the car for three months, you just added more weight, now you want to get some more lift out of it. How are you going to adjust this? You have to first, most importantly, you have to first clean the entire situation. Now you've got to clean all the threads and you've got to clean behind here. How are you going to clean behind here when you've got a coil spring on there? You're not going to be able to. So what you want to do when you're assembling these, if you live in a um, rough climate, with salty climate or lots of mud and stuff, you're going to have to try and dunk a whole bunch of water and stuff in behind here to hopefully get to clean those threads. But you may not be able to do that. What you're going to want to do is put this in a strut spring compressor, compress the coil, so that this is low enough that you'll be able to pick up these threads, I mean, pick up this uh, coil seat to see these threads and clean these. Now, imagine that you adjust this adjuster up into filthy threads, you're gonna jam it. So, and not to mention that, this is already jammed. This is double nutted is what they call it right now. These two are locked in, so you can't, I can't rotate these no matter what I do. If I do try and rotate them, I'm gonna damage the threads. All right, so just remember, Behind this coil seat, this is what? This is uh, at least an inch, inch and a half thick of thread coverage that you will not be able to access to clean very well. If you just, if you're a daily driver or whatever, you hardly ever off road this, it'll probably be fine behind here, but you won't know for sure. So, what you're going to want to try and do is clean down inside there, or preferably put this in a coil spring compressor, tighten this down so that you can lift this up and clean the threads. So first thing to adjust the height is going to be to unlock the uh, top and bottom coil seat. So you're going to hold the top and lower the bottom. Doesn't take much to get them separated. You're going to take the, the bottom locking nut out of the way. This I'll just lift up to get out of the way. And now you can adjust this up. You can see how smooth these threads are when it's new. This will not last if you get a bunch of stone chips on here or a bunch of mud, or if you don't take care of these and clean these up very well. So, and, and mind you, you're never gonna adjust this down again. I've never seen anybody really need to lower their suspension unless they installed it wrong. So, poor insulations is the name of the game here and why I'm making these videos to try and help explain what's going on with these struts. So anyway, um, then you're gonna set the coil, spring, coil seat height again. You're gonna measure from here to the bottom of the uh, center hole. You're going to bring this up and lock it in. You're going to, and now you can do that. You can do all of that with the coil spring sitting here in a coil spring compressor, like what we have at Dobinson's. Um, but and then you don't have to disassemble everything else, but you do want to watch out for those threads. Um, just want to show you a little bit close up again. This is a fully threaded body. It's pretty incredible. You've got a 50 millimeter piston inside here. And this is, I think is a 56 mil. Uh, body all up, so three millimeter wall. Um, let's show you another feature. This is a um, a flush mount uh, air valve. Very simple, 
nothing's going to like chunk that off and rip it off. So as compared to the, um, this is the IMS once again, as compared to the MRA with the reservoir, you're going to have a hose attached right here, a hose going out to the reservoir. The reservoir has dual speed compression adjuster on it. And the MRAs also have, the MRA struts have a adjustable uh, rebound adjuster threaded right through the shaft of this. So this looks a lot like an MRA um, and a lot of parts are similar, but of course the MRA does have some more features. So uh, thanks very much and let me know if you have any questions.